<coughs> I'm not gonna be able to make it into school today. I'm feeling trans. Great knees, great drive. The fact that this is coming from Oregon really does matter. Gallagher, the victory here in section number one. 25-49. She's going the distance. She's really a he. Wait. I think the line is she's going for speed. Either way, let's get into this story. What's up, everybody? Ty Rivera here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. This story was brought to my attention by my East Coast bestie, Renee, living in New Jersey. I don't know why. That's neither here nor there. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about today was the transgender athlete. Oh that smoked the girls during a track meet over the weekend and social media was outraged over it. I'm gonna read the story for you guys. I'm also gonna give my opinion on this. I really do feel like if you have transitioned to being a woman, being a girl, you should really just sit it out and let your muscles soften is what I really feel about it. <laughs> you do not need to be doing these butch manly activities that are gonna keep you built like a man. Are we trying to be a woman or are we not trying to be a woman? Where are we ladies? But also in their own self-interest, why wouldn't you compete against the women? Did you not transition so that you could be a groundbreaking bitch? Or did you transition so you could be some kind of sideline? Either way, when I'm being serious about it, I really do feel like if you decide to transition and you're still going to compete in anything physical, anything physical at all, I think that you should still compete with the boys. Not only because it's fair to the girls, because the girls do lose out on things. A lot of times if you're in high school, you're trying to get a scholarship so that you can go to college. And why should they not have an opportunity at these scholarships? because what was a genetic male decided to transition and is now calling himself a girl or calling herself a girl, however you want to say that, which I know, again, let me just say this really quick. Some of you are going to get mad at me. I know that happens almost every video when I say she and it's genetically a male, but there's two things going on. One, I get kind of confused when I'm doing these stories anyway. But the other thing is, I don't know if you know this, but YouTube doesn't exactly like that behavior. When you're misgendering people, YouTube has a problem with it. And then YouTube will demonetize the video, which all the editing that goes into a video and the time you take to record a video, you now are not getting paid for. And some of you will be like, well, Candace Owens does it. Well, let's revisit this when I have Candace Owens money. Let's revisit this when I'm married to a rich white man. Then let's go ahead and talk about that. But for now, I say things the best way that I can say them. I try to get my point point across to you guys so we can have a little bit of fun with these stories because the world has gone mad and I'm 100% willing to admit that and I don't mind discussing it with you guys but I think we should have a laugh about these things so when you know where my heart is and you still get like why are you saying this this particular way it's like can you just give me a break I'm a comedian I'm here to have a good time and also share some opinions but what I was trying to say is I think that if you transition from boy to girl, you should definitely still compete against the boys and not only because it would be more fair to the women, but also because then you could tell the other boys, you just got your ass beat by a f it. I would have to beat that, but it rhymes with baguette. But you can say that and then you can be like, now let's hit the showers and let me show you what a real woman's body looks like, fellas. You know, I really do feel like if you're trans, you should have more fun with being trans. That's what it comes down to. And also, you have to remember, you just got here. Some of these girls have been working at being girls their entire life because they didn't have a choice. And now you've decided that you're going to be a girl and you're snatching not only wigs, but also awards, medals, and scholarships. So let's get into this story. This is by Fox News. I know, again, some of you are going to get like, well, Fox News is very right-leaning. The last couple articles I've read have been by left-leaning. So I just find who's reporting the news. And I will tell you that on this particular one, outside of certain blogs like Neighborhood Talk had reported on it, but outside of certain blogs like that, the mainstream media doesn't really want to pick this 
one up because it's a bit of a hot potato because the truth is for the last couple of years, mainstream media really was supporting LGBT and trans. And now that it's fallen out of favor with the general public, for the most part, mainstream media has to figure out a way to pivot, but they can't just pivot overnight because then they look bad and disingenuous, which we all know that mainstream media is bad and disingenuous. They're just there to make money. So anytime people feel like mainstream media really supports this or mainstream media really supports that, mainstream media really supports making money and selling ads. So when you guys think that mainstream media actually has some morality attached to it, stop yourselves. So here we go from Fox News. Before we go any further, I'm just going to ask that you like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to comment just to help me on the algorithm, but you don't know what to comment, just leave a knife because you know transgender activists are going to come for my neck. Oregon high school transgender track athlete competes against girls at events, sparking outrage on social media. And then the sub headline is Aiden Gallagher finished as high as second place in the event. An Oregon high school came under fire on Saturday as a transgender athlete was able to compete against girls at a meet. This is where I'm going to stop really quick because the fact that this is coming from Oregon really does matter. Oregon really has jumped off the deep end when it comes to politically correct in general, woke is what you could call Oregon. Nike is based there, closer to Portland. I don't know if Nike has put something in the water or why it's turned out so much that way in Portland. Nobody ever mentions the fact that they might still be protesting over I don't know what there at this point. Portland was so crazy with the way that they were breaking things and looting and blowing things up that for a minute there, they were making Gaza look like a quiet place to study. So when it comes to Oregon, I would just write them off altogether, but we're still going to go ahead and finish reading this story. Aiden Gallagher, a 10th grader at McDaniel High School, competed in the Sherwood Need for Speed Classic in Sherwood, Oregon, which again, I looked up Sherwood. Sherwood is 30 minutes from Portland, and if there's anybody from Oregon in the comments, I know you're going to be like, well, I live in Corvallis, and we don't go for that woke stuff over here, or you're going to be like, I live in Grants Pass, and we're definitely not that. I live in Eugene, and Eugene is kind of on that too. But whatever, I know that Oregon can be a great place. It's one of the first places that I did the road as a comedian. So I know how fun you guys used to be. And I know even Portland used to be really great. But then at a point, it just went too far with the political correctness. And now it's no fun at all. And it really has been taken over by literally the woke mob. And so Sherwood is 30 minutes from Portland. That's practically still Portland. That's a suburb is what that is. Okay, so I'll keep going. Gallagher was seen in one clip blowing away the competition in a heat for the 200 meter. Gallagher clocked in with a 25.49 mark and ended up finishing in second place in that event as well as the 400 meter and in seventh place in the 4x100 relay and eighth place in the 4x400 relay. But Gallagher's ability to compete in the event sparked outrage on social media. Okay, so you did really well on that first one but then you finished in seventh and eighth place just pack it up and be a boy again this isn't working out you're supposed to smoke all these events what are we doing here Aiden if you're not gonna smoke the girls stay off the track you're making all of us look bad boys girls trans you gotta at least win some shit I mean like look at what Michael Phelps did I mean like Leah Thomas yeah Leah Thomas <laughs> Look at what Leah Thomas did. She was winning everything. Bitch was unstoppable. That was girl power right there. Anyway, but Gallagher's ability to compete in the event sparked outrage on social media. Championing boys in girls sports is blatant misogyny. The Independent Council on Women's Sports wrote on X. X, in case you're not familiar, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Abuse of girls by government. Judicial Watch's Tom Fitton wrote. Another proud moment for women's sports. Outkick founder Clay Travis wrote. Libs of TikTok added, these high school girls just had their dreams stolen from them because the school is catering the delusions of a boy who pretends to be a girl. He is a cheater. The Oregon School Activities Association, OSAA, has a policy for transgender participation in high school sports. The OSAA endeavors to allow students to participate for the athletic or activity program of their consistently asserted gender identity while providing a fair and 
and safe environment for all students, the policy stated. As with Rule 8.2 regarding duration of eligibility and or graduation, rules such as this one promote harmony and fair competition among member schools by maintaining a quality of eligibility and increase the number of students who will have an opportunity to participate in interscholastic activities. Now, I take issue with them saying to provide fair competition because if you're born stronger and faster by nature of your biology, that is not fair to the genetic females that are getting shorted and losing opportunities. And I'm sure when they're considering people for scholarships, if a woman gets put behind because a genetic male was competing, I doubt the school that's considering this person for the scholarship is going to take into account, oh, she only finished second or third because there was a genetic male in the race. All they see is where she finished and decide based on that. That's what I would imagine happens. I've never worked for any type of organization that gives out scholarships, but that's what my common sense would tell me. Maybe somebody can correct me in the comments. So I don't think that those rules are really providing fair competition. Additionally, the OSAA rules state that once a transgender student has notified the student school of their gender identity, the student shall be consistently treated as that gender for purposes of eligibility for athletics and activities, provided that if the student has tried out or participated in an activity, the student may not participate during that same season on a team of the other gender. Okay, so you've got to start out going for the girls' sports. You can't have just transferred from the boys' sports to the girls' sports within the same season, which by their thinking, I guess, does make sense. But again, I don't think that this is a fair situation at all. And when they say once a transgender student has notified the student's school of their gender identity, how does that work? Do you just walk into the principal's office one day and say, I am a girl now? Or do you come in with a note from your parents saying Aiden now identifies as a girl, so she's to be treated as such? Can you call out trans from school? I wonder. I mean, like in the beginning, it would seem that that's a lot to go through, so you can be like, <coughs> I'm not going to be able to make it into school today. I'm feeling trans. And they're like, all right, well, you know, if you identify as sick for the day, I guess we have to respect that you're sick for the day. And also when they say the OSAA endeavors to allow students to participate for the athletic or activity program of their consistently asserted gender identity. So as long as you keep saying it, that makes it true, according to the OSAA. But let me break it down for you guys. I'm going to tell you guys what I really think we need to do. I think we just need to forget that Oregon is a state. I think that this entire story just needs to be a their problem situation. And I know a lot of you are going to say, but what about the girls? And what about the women in Oregon? The women and the girls in Oregon are probably willing to go along with this because that's just what Oregon has turned into. I would look at Oregon as if you had an alcoholic family member. They don't realize there's a problem. They are still in denial. And until they realize a problem, there really isn't a problem to work on. A person's got to want it. You can't want it for them. So when it comes to places like Oregon, I feel like we just have to completely make like they're not there, let them do what they want to do, and then on a national level, be like, okay, you're right, you may have won these particular races, and you may qualify for this particular meet, but this is now the nationals, and in the nationals, we recognize that there is a difference between sex and gender, and we are going on sex, so you're either born male or female, and I don't care about what hormones you're on or how many times you have identified as this particular gender, your sex is immutable. You are definitely a male and males do not compete against females. So that's the end of that conversation. Hit up the Supreme Court, write a blog about it, tell your friends, put it on Instagram. We don't care. You're male or female and that's the end of it. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This has been Ty Rivera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. Little boy.